Welcome back to this channel. If after the 2017 general election, William Ruto would have booked time and have a sit down with Franklin Bett and Henry Kosgei, amongst other senior members of Kalenjin community, he would not be at the position where he is. Today, the former Bureti member of parliament, Franklin Bett, is delivering a very critical message to William Samuel Ruto. In an article that was published by the Star, Franklin Bett seems to be advising William Ruto on something that he believes is normally his biggest blunder. Of course, one thing that happened is after William Ruto realized that Uhuru Kenyatta was not going to support him, he went out and looked for his own vote. And of course, you have to give him that credit because he knew very well that the president was not going to support him. That is why Charles Cater the other day was saying that the fallout between President Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto would have happened despite of the handshake. So the dice was casted. He tried to play the victims uh, card, but I think it reached a point where he said, gloves or gloves off, and he went to bear knuckle against President Uhuru Kenyatta. Uh, the latest announcement by Uhuru Kenyatta that he was going to support Raila Odinga for presidency in this August general election sent panic to William Ruto's camp. But I think people expected for him to come out ranting. But when he was speaking in Makweni, he actually changed the tone and was really saying that I respect your decision to support Raila, but you're not my competitor. Raila Odinga is my competitor. The president of Kenya has decided in his democratic right to support my competitor and I respect the opinion and the decision of my friend, the president, but I also know that the president of Kenya is not my competitor. My competitor is Mr. Kitendawili. And therefore, I ask Mr. Kitendawili not to hide behind President Uhuru Kenyatta. He must step forward and compete with me. Franklin Bett is making it open and clear. In a bombshell, he is actually telling the deputy president to stop and avoid attacking Uhuru Kenyatta. In fact, he says that he should not even respond to Uhuru Kenyatta. In his own words, that is something that is going to destroy his political future. Franklin Bett is not just your ordinary politician. He is actually, Bureti is from Kericho County. And he is a man who was brought in active politics mostly. He was actually brought by Raila Dinga back in 2002 when Raila Dinga brought him under the LDP so that he could join NAC and bring a chunk of votes from Rift Valley. Even though he did not win, but then he was appointed, he was nominated, but won the constituency seat in 2007 after that the general election and was part of the Grand Coalition government. So currently he is actually the chairman of Agricultural Finance Corporation, a job that he was given by President Huru Kenyatta. A senior member that really believes that William Ruto is making a big blunder. Before I take you to my own reasons why I think that's also be why he is actually telling Ruto to stop that, himself he's saying this, that just like William Ruto has political attack dogs, Uhuru Kenyatta also have political attack dogs. And that is not enough. Uhuru Kenyatta is getting is sending attacks from his jubilee party and Raila Odinga support base. And to Franklin Bett, that is something that is going to work against William Ruto. I have mentioned in this channel repeated that William Ruto do not stand a chance to win against these fellas. He do not stand that chance. And of course, if you look at the way he's talking, he was looking like someone who has now not really given up, but he seems to feel like the pressure is just too much. We are used to seeing a very defiant, 
chest thumping deputy president someone who believes and says that no one is going to steal my vote and this is a mission i must complete but when you look at when he was speaking william ruto is looking fatigued he's looking frustrated and if it is not just that he had trusted himself to vie for that seat, he would have actually have given up. I wanted to listen to this clip when he was talking immediately after Uhuru and Australia. Track record yake. Hawa wananchi wa Kenya ni watu wenye akili, wataamua ni nani yako na agenda bora kuliko mwenzake. Na mimi nataka nimuulize mzee wa Kitendawili, akubali matokeo ya uchaguzi. Asipange tena maandamano. Na asijiapishe. Si ndio? Na asipange mambo ya fujo kwa sababu wananchi wa Kenya wanamngojea ama namna gani The deputy president is not a man of his own ones and i think by all indications the two gentlemen Uhuru and Raila have actually converged to push him out of the 2022 uh, presidential matrix Why do you think that William Ruto should not respond to Uhuru in my own understanding, I have come up with four uh, points that I believe, in my own observation, is going is what is is what is my point not for him to respond to Huru. If you're watching this video and you have not subscribed, kindly take a second and subscribe, and also click the notification bell. When we publish a video, you will be notified. And also, more importantly, the end, the National Governing Council by ODM Party is currently underway. Jubilee in Bomas and Jubilee is also meeting at KICC. So we're also following up on that and of make sure you are glued to this channel because we shall be bringing you an exclusive critical analysis of these two events. Of course, they are related because of them, all these parties are supposed to endorse Raila Odinga for the presidency. The problem of these people attacking Uhuru Kenyatta is that the allies of Uhuru, allies of William Ruto, are going to suffer. Now, one thing that Franklin Baird did not mention, but if you, if you read that article, it's actually coming out clearly, is that Uhuru Kenyatta has the blessings of government machinery, he has both the political power, and you also have the government power. That is why you will see that regarding Gashagwa, Whenever he attacks the president, the president pulls the corruption battle that is going on. And so you will find that if this happens, maybe security is withdrawn. And you've been seeing this in uh, recent times. The security is withdrawn. Secondly, kidogo kidogo, you feel someone is facing corruption charges and is now being taken to ESCC. They will always find something they can pull. Then at the end you hear the criminal case, maybe if there is something. Because you are a human being and these things... What make you be human are the errors. So, for example, a leader like Aisha Juma, the criminal case is just hanging somewhere. Just they're, they're just waiting to see how she's going to behave. So, Uhuru can always attack you from different corners. That is why, if you want to play safe, then you just let it be. Three, when you attack Uhuru, you are picking the wrong battle. And William Ruto have actually confessed that Uhuru Kenyatta is not his competitor and Raila Odinga is his competitor. So when you concentrate on, atta on attacking Uhuru, you give Raila a default innocence. Because uh, you might feel like some things that, are, things that are happening are happening because Raila is with Uhuru Kenyatta. But then if you attack Uhuru, people feel like you have left Raila, so Raila is not part of the problem, Uhuru is part of the problem, while on August 8th, Uhuru is not going to be on ballot. The person that is going to be on ballot is Raila Odinga. And I remember, if you read, I read that article, Franklin Bent is telling William Ruto that there is nothing Mudavadi is adding on board. He just brought Mudavadi so that Mudavadi can keep on insulting President Uhuru Kenyatta. But that means that Mudavadi is not adding anything on board. That one came because they actually picked the wrong battle. Mudavadi would have come, let them attack Raila, because Raila is the person who is their competitor. And William Ruto have actually confessed this. Um, I've also realized that attacking Uhuru shows a revenge mission. Then it actually neutralizes your push for presidency based on your manifesto. Actually, you will get worried. And if you listen to any speech by either by, by UDA team, 
even before Uhuru held the Sagana too, you could not even differentiate, are they talking in Busia or are they talking in Kakamega or are they talking in, in Mombasa? Because the speeches are flat, very flat. It's all about Tumefukuzwa, the president, state project. You know, it's just the bitter venom against President Uru Kenyatta. Then at the tail end of their speeches in the campaign rallies, they talk about the bottom up and they don't explain it. They talk about, they just make people say, Kenya, Kwanza, Kazi, Nikazi, Mpesa, Mfukoni, just that. So that makes their politics be seen as a revenge mission, but not really based on what they want to do for Kenyans. While this is breaking from initial plan by William Ruto. William Ruto had been selling the Hustler Nation, and that's why, that's what he used to sway youths around his presidential bid. But because it has now turned to be a revenge mission because if you keep on attacking president, you seem and everyone else knows that you are the deputy president. So we're just talking about the fallout between you and President Uhuru Kenyatta. I think this attacks to some pundits, it also amounts to what is called insubordination or betrayal. And betrayal advantage is both way. Even the president betrayed deputy president. And now, Deputy President also, the President also feels like he was betrayed. And of course, that equation goes 1-1. One, one. Because the President on the other hand says that my deputy went on early campaigns and I told him let's come and deliver the legacy, that we, the things that we promised Kenyans. But my deputy opted for early campaigns. Then the deputy also says uh, that he was removed from government and his position was given to Matiangi and he had shown the intention according to him he was so skeptical that the handshake between Uhuru and Raila was a political move to push him out of the 2022 presidential race and now Uhuru supporting William Ruto Uhuru supporting Raila have been seen as a direct betrayal of the Kumiyangu Kumiyako back in 2013. Now, what this conversation mean is this, huh? when you respond to Kenyatta, it becomes a one-on-one -on -one affair, then they feel like they're, they're fellows who might now play the politics and say that he's disrespect, and, and, and of course you've had this narrative, he's disrespecting his boss, he, he's saying very uh, un unprintable words, and I think there is a time that William Ruto said Uhuru is Tapeli. Now, these words of Tapeli, these are the things that now feels like he's even diminishing the presidency as an office. And Franklin Bent mentioned about this. So I, I think it's now open clear that something needs to be done. But of more importance is that you cannot run everything alone. It was time if I was Uhuru, if I was uh, William Ruto, let's tone down the way he is doing and let's face it. And of importance, I, I, I think the people around you there now are cheerleaders. All of them are short term, short sighted. They are only looking at 2022, how to become a governor, how to become a senator, how to become an MP. That's what they're looking. So they are coalescing around William Ruto, not to propel him to presidency, for, but to ride on his euphoria, you know, his euphoria to win their seats. So it is time for William Ruto to go back. Let him go back to the old men. Let him go back to the Franklin bed. Let him look for the Sally Cosgay. So, uh, not Hassel, because Henry Kosgei, so that these fellas can come in, come down and dress him. In fact, it is the Franklin Bent and the Henry Kosgei that can even negotiate a handshake between William Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta, if there was something like that to happen. But for now, sending the attack dogs is not adding any value to him. Guys, that's my analysis. I am coming back to tell you why I think that Uhuru, uh, William Ruto has finally lost the Western beat. There is something interesting from that place.